shoes. They serve a purpose and they can also make a fashion statement too. Michael Johnson was a track and field runner for the Olympics in 1996 in Atlanta, Georgia. I remember this race well. He ran the 200 meter run. He ran the first 100 meter, guys, in 10.12 seconds. That's fairly fast. But it was his last 100 meter that was amazing. He ran it in 9.2. That's quantum speed, okay? To the point that he earned the title the world's fastest man. He also won a gold medal for that as well. That's probably icing on the cake. They normally reserve the title world's fastest man for the people who run only the 100 meter uh, run, not the 200, but in his case, they made an exception. But it's not Michael's uh, gold medal, nor is it his speed record that I'm talking about. It's his shoes, gold-plated Nike track shoes with spikes. They helped him to have balance on the track. They also gave him momentum and stability. Those things are all well and done, but they served another purpose. He said, and I quote, I didn't want to be standing there in gold-plated shoes with a silver medal around my neck. So they challenged him to bring his best personal A-game to the greatest A-game of his entire career. Shoes can make the runner. If you have your Bibles, turn with me or listen carefully to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. I will be reading in the God's Word translation. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. So then, take your stand. Fasten truth around your waist like a belt. Put on God's approval as your chest plate. Put on your shoes so that you are ready to spread the good news that gives peace. So we want to talk briefly as we continue our series about suiting up, a catalog of God's armor. You know, if you went to an online sports shop, for those of you who play uh, baseball, softball, for those of you who play soccer, maybe uh, football, uh, you can get online and order your own equipment, especially things that you want to personalize for yourself or have custom made. Track shoes is just one of them, okay? And so you find the online catalog and you can find what the price is and you can order your size and you can make sure that they have it in stock. Well, in Ephesians chapter 6, there is God's, you might say, online catalog. He has that list of the armor. Each piece has a unique purpose. Each piece uh, serves a very special purpose and has a very special property. One size really does fit all, but it is uniquely fitted for each one of your personal needs in your personal life. That's the grace of God. The Bible says, The night is nearly over. The day is drawn near. So let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Romans 3.12 You are not lacking any peace. Paul listed it quite clearly. That's not something you got to go back and uh, it's a special order. I hate those things. Or Not in stock, but we can keep it on back order. You're not going to find any back order with Jesus Christ. It's, it's yours when you need it as you need it. I went to the junior-senior prom in 1987 at Canton Academy. I was about 17, almost 18 years old, and I had my tux. It was a white dinner jacket cut off at the waist. It's called the Eisenhower style. At least in my day it was called that. It may be called something else now. Black pants. I had my bow tie. I had the uh, cuff links. Oh, I, I looked like a million dollars. I felt like Bond, 007, James Bond. Only I didn't have my shoes. Well, I had shoes. They sent me white patent leather shoes. I was not going to wear white shoes with black pants. It's 1987, not 1977, people. But pitching a hissy fit with the manager was not going to work, either for me or for my mom. So you make do. Well, I made do, all right. I had black band shoes. They were rock ports, and they were super comfortable. Uh, our marching band, we had to have black shoes because we had black pants. I wore those, got to the uh, country club and realized <laughs> the music is amped up, the lights are turned low, nobody's looking at your feet, much less do they care. In fact, by the end of the night, uh, the people who were dancing that were still dancing, most of the girls had taken their shoes off anyway. It really didn't matter. But in, when it comes to the armor of God and the shoes of peace, guess what? You've got everything that you need in this catalog. In fact, each piece you should put on with prayer. God has made you complete in Christ. Christ is in charge of every ruler and authority, Colossians 2.10. So as we look at this catalog, 
knowing that each piece is an impressive assortment, I want you to note the shoes of peace. Now, the next image is not going to be track shoes. These are actual Roman shoes. In fact, they may be about 2,000 years old, that particular picture of them. They're called caligae. I know, kind of a strange word. It's a Latin word. They have, if you can tell underneath here, they actually have these spikes. Why? Because a Roman soldier, when he had his armor, he had his sword, he had his shield, uh, they're going to be able to plant their feet. Because when you're fighting, you want to be able to stand your ground and not slip and slide. Okay? Reminds me of something I heard in a pep rally one time. Why'd your boy slip and slide? But anyway, you don't want to slip and slide when you're fighting with a, uh, with a, with a sword. Because if you do, you die. And a Roman soldier was expected to fight. There's no backing up from that fight. There's no running away from that fight. Okay? Uh, you take the fight to the enemy. You, you gain ground. You claim that ground. In fact, uh, it's the same principle. If you wear, uh, I don't play golf, but for people who play golf, you have special shoes that have the spikes that you can grab the turf. Or uh, when you play, uh, I don't know about today's generation, but in my generation, yes, I played uh, farm league and I played little league. And so we actually had the cleats so that you could get a good grip on the ground and be able to play your best game uh, and, and bring your A game, even if it was a B game. However, uh, spiritually, that's what happens with the shoes of peace. It allows you to get a grip on the ground. In fact, uh, to be able to stand up spiritually, you've got to have the shoes of the gospel of peace. Alexander McLaren was an old-timey preacher a long time ago who said the following, The condition of being ready comes from the good news of Christ. The gospel is what gives peace. So that means you... As, teen, as children, wrong one, you as teenagers, you as children, and you as adults, we have got to be fitted with the shoes of the gospel of peace, privately, personally, as well as collectively. If we're going to uh, share peace with somebody, if we're going to make peace, if we're going to be peacemakers and peace proclaimers, we better know who the Prince of Peace is. That's the essence of the shoes of the gospel of peace, especially if you're going to stand your ground because... The, the ground that you stand on, not necessarily the physical ground, but morally and spiritually and culturally, that is shifting sand. It, it is always in motion. It's like being in an earthquake zone. But you have the shoes of the gospel of peace on, you're going to be able to stand your ground. You're going to be able to get a grip. But you know, the scholars tell us when we think of these Roman shoes, I have an image I can see at the back of the church, you have the image right behind me. So if you notice, why is he pointing to always? Well, if, if you, I have it in front of me, so it's easier to sometimes point, I forget. So I will stand sideways and we will do both. There you go. All right, so anyway, uh, the Roman soldier, as I said, was expected to take the fight to the enemy. Now if you don't like a fight scene, let's put it back into track, or better yet, since we're in baseball season, let's put it in baseball season. Uh, if you're going to play on a team, then you're expected to have your gear when you go to the game. You're expected to have your, the shoes that you need, okay? Uh, the uniform, that if you're wearing a uniform, you're expected to have, if you have a customized bat, uh, one that you may have spent good money for that's fitted just for you, you ought to bring it. Uh, a glove that's well oiled and that you're familiar with and that you know is not going to let you down you're going to bring it and you're going to bring it to the game and sometimes you sit on the bench that happens okay but then there are other times you get to play but you have to have your equipment if you're ever going to play your best a game well you take the fight to the enemy or if you're going to run a track meet because i'm a little bit more familiar with track yeah you want to have the right shoes and the right form and the right training if you're going to compete otherwise you're going to make an embarrassment of yourself you're not out there to jog and you're not out there to do the shuffle okay uh, you're not out there to do the moonwalk which in these boots i will not try with these weak ankles but you get the idea you're out there to run if you if you were to be on my track team you're going to run whether you like it or not you're going to run and then you're going to run some more however Spiritually, guess what? We are expected to take the fight to the enemy. We are expected to not only stand our ground, but to keep moving forward. And so the scripture tells us how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, that's another name for the people of God, your God reigns, Isaiah 52, 7. The Lord is, God is my strength and will make my feet like hind's feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places. That's found in the book of Habakkuk, or you could pronounce that as Habakkuk. I've heard it done either way. I prefer Habakkuk because I'm old school. Uh, 319, 
the prophet is envisioning the mountain deer or even the mountain goats that can jump from one ledge to another, one cliff to another, and they always, well, nearly always, I've never seen one fall yet, but or if they do, they recover quickly, always land on their feet. Now, you go mountain climbing or rock climbing with me, and I say, hey, here's a small ledge. You've got that. How bad could it be? Come on. You know you got it. You know you want to. And, and you make a jump for it. You might land it and ace it and just throw this illustration out the water. Okay? Or you might fall flat on your face. You make it, but it's not going to be pretty. Or better yet, you might fall all the way down. So, you know, chances are we're not always going to be landing on our feet. But with the word of God and with the shoes of the gospel of peace, we're going to land on our feet every time. And if we should stumble... We have a God whose grace is such that he helps us get up and get back in that race and be able to stand firm again, and that is awesome. So tonight, young people, children, adults, those who are watching, the Lord's got your shoe size, and it's a good fit. The shoes of peace, they're your gold track shoes. They're your army boots that you can stand your ground in. You can stand your ground, you can claim new ground, and you never, ever have to give up or surrender ground to the enemy. But be sure you have on your spiritual shoes so that you can run and walk and not get tore up so that you can stand. Because if you don't have them on, then that's kind of rough. I watched another Olympic race, 1984. Mary Decker Cheney was a great marathon racer. They was in the, in the uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the auditorium, not the auditorium, um, the Coliseum, where they have the big track, and they're just running around and around and around and around, around. She had on the track shoes. She had on the uniform. Everything she needed to run her race. But there was a young teenage girl from South Africa by the name of Zola Bud. Zola Bud, who was a very good runner, she ran barefoot. There's always that one exception to the rule, okay? I don't see how you can run barefoot for a long period of time, but that's how she trained, and let me tell you, she was good. That is until sometimes in running a marathon, they get into what I call the holy huddle spread out, <laughs> you know, uh, but sometimes they get into the huddle and something happened and Mary Decker Cheney face planted and of course she's out of the race and she's crying and Zola Bud keeps running, she got tripped up but she kept running, Mary Decker Cheney said she tripped me, Zola Bud said no it was an accident, I don't know what happened, either way it was a bad situation, imagine though if she had perhaps been uh, a little bit more of aware of where she put her feet. And what if Mary Decker Cheney had had shoes that might would have given her a little bit better balance? We may never know, but spiritually, with the shoes of peace, we don't have to worry about falling or, or such. I wore the Spike track shoes. Canton Academy provided them, but you, they had them in a big pile. You find your size, and good luck. That was pretty much it right there. Despise that. Mom didn't really want me to uh, shelling out a lot of money for my own personalized track shoes, but I was wanting to get, they weren't gold-plated, but they were going to be fluorescent yellow with a black swoosh because I believe in make them remember you, okay? Uh, it's not bragging if you can do it. But anyway, with that said, uh, we didn't ever make it that far with the uh, Foot Locker, so I was a little irritated. It was one of my last few races that I ran, so guess what? I ran in Reeboks. Did well, mind you. But I wonder if I'd have had the right shoes for the right race, how much better I could have done and how much better my team could have done. With the shoes of the gospel of peace, children, youth, adults, we can run the race, we can stand our ground. So by his grace, go with God.